promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hello and welcome once again, movie fans. This is Quick Shot Reviews. I am your host, Luke, and as ever, you are the Cheap Shot Nation. Thank you very much for joining us on this very special review because we have got something to review that probably not a lot of people thought was going to be any good. It didn't come into any fanfare, but it did get recognised as one of the better films at the end of 2021, beginning of 2022, including a couple of Oscar nominations for this one. It is Paul Thomas Anderson's Licorice Pizza, two things that should probably never go together, which I think represent the two characters of the main part of the story. It was released in 2021, and uh, I'm going to give you my thoughts on it fully right now, or at least after the intro video. Join us. Licorice Pizza follows the story of Alana Kane and Gary Valentine growing up, running around and going through a treacherous navigation of first love in the San Fernando Valley. I should have said that a bit better, like Peter Vinkman from Ghostbusters 2 in the beautiful San Fernando Valley in 1973. So you get the clothes, you get the... Uh, cops you get the music and everything to go along with it it is just an utterly enjoyable experience and there is some cringeworthy moments but they did make me laugh and that probably says more about me than uh, it should do but i mean there is some questionable things in this one which i'll go through but uh, shouldn't spoil your spoil the recognition of this film because it is very good and some very good acting debuts for some people that have never been in films before and that's what I really like about this one it's like it stars Elena Haim as Elena uh, Cooper Hoffman as Gary Valentine Sean Penn as Jack Holden uh, Tom Waits as Rex Blue and Bradley Cooper as John Peters so as you can tell there are some parodies of well-known celebrities in here as well as being played by well-known celebrities such as Bradley Cooper who has also had another film released in 2021-22 called Nightmare Alley which I will get around to reviewing very soon anyway Licorice Pizza is also the name of a defunct record store uh, record chain rather that was based in the 70s in Southern California. So, you know, it's kind of got a reference there, but I think the reference is to the two main characters who really shouldn't go together, but it leaves you intrigued as to why they've been put together. You know, um, as well as the name of Paul Thomas Anderson's newest kinetic and entertaining nostalgia-ridden teen romance. Now, there's a little bit of... Uh, you know, having thought about it again, probably not necessarily a teen romance, but we'll get we'll get to that. Uh, it's um, you know, uh, bygone era. Um, there's burgers, there's pop, there's pimples and stupidity. The province of restless youth uh, looking for life in all the wrong places. Uh, Anderson's star child is Elena. Elena Haim in uh, her first film, her first de debut, uh, as attractive a heroine as you could ever occupy the non, not the prettiest face, um, but almost uh, absolutely charming and really played well here. And her chemistry with the other characters is fantastic as well. But she is 25. 
and Gary Cooper, uh, so Gary Valentine is 50. Now he's a bit of a hustler, he's a bit of a child star, a bit of a cult leader as well with all the people, all the children that hang around with him. Um, well, the other teens, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, he's played by Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, and uh, transformed by his son Cooper into a into a charming Gary Valentine, winning the heart of someone who's ten years older than he is. As the two leads navigate um, through life uh, through a summer, basically <laughs> it doesn't go on for very long. Uh, they get into the waterbed business. They open up a, cha a uh, pinball machine palace, pinball palace. They they uh, do all sorts of things. Um, even like Gary even gets arrested at one point, as well as trying to fit a waterbed into uh, John Peter's bedroom in his big mansion. Um, so. You know, uh, Bradley Cooper's portrayal of John Peters, uh, who at the time was in a romance with Barbara Streisand, uh, could be made to be a complete satire of himself. Sean Penn as a motorcycling Jack Holden, a stand-in for William Holden, almost steals the pick from Cooper with his craziness. And in both cases, Anderson nicely contrasts the season start with the two leads, um, and uh, all for the better, better of uh, the casting and the film. So this is a mostly charming take on first romance during the 70s. It's really funny, it's deadpan, and, uh, you know, there isn't a laughter track. Everything that was, you know, all the people that were laughing were actually in the cinema. I can't remember the last time I spent time in a cinema and actually laughed out loud to a film. And this was one of the ones that I did. And it was absolutely wonderful. Really, really good. And it captures the visually alluring uh, early 70s charm of Hollywood and the eternal search of youth looking for love wherever it may show up. Licorice Pizza is colourful, it's entertaining, and Anderson's buddy Tarantino did Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the, the funky, dope, adult, creative Southern California of the 1970s. So we get a couple of films like this. This one is quite unique in the way it's done. Now, I did have a slight problem with the 10 year age difference between Elena and uh, Gary Valentine. But ultimately you kind of forget that. And I think that was probably a creative mishap. I think if she was like 18 or something, it would probably be a bit more acceptable because she'd still think of herself as an adult, whereas he wants to be an adult. And it's the transition between child an adult that he really wants to grasp with both hands so he can prove that he's an adult and that ultimately remains extremely charming to me so i would recommend you go and watch this film it's really difficult to describe how good this film actually is how entertaining it is with very little effort <laughs> into what it's doing and uh, it just works. It just works on so many levels. You want them to get together. And that is uh, ultimately a, a sign of a good director because no one should ever want a 15-year-old going out with a 25-year-old. Although, obviously, if they were 10 years older, both of them, it probably wouldn't be as bad. But, yeah, it that was my only sort of issue here i think the age difference probably could have come down i mean she says she's 25 
I still think there's a little bit of room there for her to be saying she's 25 to to, to appear older to older people. So, yeah, it kind of works both ways, doesn't it? Anyway, if you've watched Licorice Pizza, what do you think of it? Leave the comments in the comments section down below. Join us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, Cheap Shot Entertainment. And I will see you next time, film fans. Thank you very much for watching this video and goodbye.